So for today, uh, the context is the construction industry. Okay, and we, when we talk about information systems, it involves three major things, which is technology, uh, people, and organization. Uh, so that's why I'm here uh, to share with you some of my knowledge. I hope uh, by the end of this session, by the end of this webinar, at least I hope um, I have uh, been able to share with you these two things. Okay, Number one is big data and data science. What is the difference? Okay. And then which is being researched in the construction field? Uh, why and what are being researched? Okay, At least I hope you get these two main points. If you get these two main points, I think I'm happy enough. Okay, Because when we talk about data science in construction industry, it's very wide, it's very big. Okay, So at least I hope by the end of this session, uh, you will achieve these two objectives. Now, what is the data science in the context of construction industry. So let's look at the definition. Okay? So data science in the construction industry refers to the application of data analysis. Okay, It refers to the application, yeah? the application of data analysis, statistical modeling and machine learning techniques to extract insights and make informed decisions within the construction sector. So actually it's the same. We are focusing on the field itself, which is construction. We use the data, we apply uh, some data techniques, okay, data analysis, statistical modeling, and machine learning, okay, to help us uh, extract insights, extract patterns, okay, so that we can make informed decisions in specifically in the construction sector. I'm sure the construction sector is big. And from how many of you here? How many of you here today? So from so many of you here, I'm not sure how, how many just now I saw 18. I'm sure you are doing um, research on various fields, right? So within that field, within that construction sector, there are many research, there are many parts that involve data, right? So what type of data will you be using to ensure that you can get patterns, insights to help you in making decisions? Okay. So, um, this is the technique whereby we use statistical modeling, machine learning. This is the objective or the outcome that we hope we get. And to do that, it involves some process, okay, which is collecting and analyzing large volumes of data generated throughout the project life cycle. Okay, I think for construction, um, the project life cycle is the keyword, okay, the project life cycle to improve efficiency, productivity, safety, and overall project outcomes. So uh, when you are doing uh, your research, you have to know what is your goal. Is your goal to improve efficiency or is it to improve productivity or is it to ensure safety or overall project outcomes? So that will be, uh, that will help you to scope uh, your research and it will help you to um, further uh, issue in finding related articles. Okay. okay, let's look at what is meant by the data science life cycle. Okay, this is according to uh, Berkeley uh, Education uh, from uh, what is data science from its website. That's the uh, link that I gave it to you. Yeah. So when we talk about um, um, Probably it doesn't look like a life cycle because it's square. Normally it's like round, right? But I'll just put the numbers. So uh, in the data science life cycle, it started. It starts with data capturing, okay? Capture the capture phase, whereby at this point we acquire the data, okay? We do the data entry, okay? We do the signal reception and data extraction. Signal reception, if for example, if it involves IoT sensors, okay? So that's the first one, data capture. Or we get the data, all right? Getting the data, basically. After getting the data, what we do number two is maintain the data. So how do we maintain the data? Is by doing, uh, by, that involves data warehousing, 
uh, data cleansing, data staging, data processing and data architecture. Okay, uh, just listen to me uh, the whole cycle that I will explain more later. Yeah, And then number three is the process. Okay, we have the data. Um, when we talk about data, there are various types. It can be structured, it can be unstructured. Okay, it can be in, term, in forms of text, it can be in, in form of images, videos. So, we already captured the data, then we maintain. How do we maintain? Meaning, after having the, the big data, uh, the big amount of data, we collect it and put it in one place. So, that's why we have a data warehouse. Of course, there are certain techniques yeah, in the computer science uh, field. Uh, how do you do the data warehousing, data cleansing and so on. Okay. Then from there, we will process the data whereby we will do the data mining, clustering, uh, data modeling and data summarization. <clears throat> okay. Then followed by the fourth phase which is analyze. After going, going through these three phases, we will analyze uh, which is, uh, these are actually the uh, statistical methods. Okay. And also qualitative analysis involved here whereby we can use exploratory or confirmatory, predictive analysis, regression, text mining, and qualitative analysis, right? And then, finally, after we have analyzed the data, remember just now, the objective is for us to uncover the hidden patterns, okay, the hidden insights. So, from then, after analyzing the data, we communicate the data. Okay, we do the data reporting, data visualization, uh, business intelligence and decision making. Okay, more about the difference, we can um, look at the difference between big data and data science in two uh, ways. Actually, many ways, but the, the one that I share you with you here are in two ways. Number one is by looking at the scope and application of these two terms okay what is the difference so in terms of scope and application if you see big data okay it actually deals with management and processing of large scale data large scale data sets okay so when we talk about big data it involves the management and process of processing of data so it involves storage uh, processing scalability, whether the storage can be scalable, can be extended. Okay, so big data technologies and techniques are used to store and process ma process massive amounts of data. So this is the scope or application of big data. On the other hand, for the data science, the scope is more on the analyzing and interpreting the data. Okay, and gaining insights and solve complex problems. So it involves uh, various processes, which is, for example, here you look at data collection, data cleaning, exploratory data analysis, statistical modeling, machine learning, predictive analytics. Okay, so for, for them to do this, we need various tools and techniques. If you are interested in data science, I think if you have the experience in searching for data science, Google data science, you will see various tools that are used by data scientists. For example, um, R, okay, R. R is a tool uh, for data scientists to do the data anal analytics uh, and various reasons. And also, Python, okay. Uh, although, yeah, uh, this, for example, these two tools are mainly used by the people in the computer science field but if you are really keen if you are really um, um, into yeah into the data um, i would advise you to explore more which is on the r r tool and also python that will be something beneficial for you okay Okay, another way of looking at the difference between data science and big data is the objectives. Okay, so the scope just now is management and processing, uh, and then for data science is on the analysis. The objectives is for ob for big data is to handle and process large and complex data sets efficiently. Okay, for data science the uh, the the, the main objective is to derive insights and actionable 
uh, intelligence from data. So uh, there are actually four stages and four types of uh, data analytics, uh, starting with the descriptive analytics, uh, the easiest one to the very hardest one or complex one. Okay, so descriptive analytics, and then we have diagnostic analytics, predictive and prescriptive. Okay, looking at the literature, uh, most uh, goes to here, predictive analytics. Probably you can, if you are into the data analytics uh, area, so maybe you can explore whether there's already people who do research on prescriptive analysis. Okay, so far that I saw is predictive, but probably I did not search uh, enough. So you can look more into into this. I mean, pre prescriptive analytics in the construction industry. Try try to see if you are into analytics. Okay, so these are the four types. Let's see one by one. Okay, what is descriptive analytics? Is actually the simplest type of analytics. Okay, and simple type of data analysis. I would say data analysis, and the foundation. The other types are built on. Okay, you cannot uh, do other types of analysis without this descriptive analytics. Okay, so it allows you to pull trends from raw data and succinctly describe what happened or is currently happening. Okay, so it's just answering what happened. What happened? How many? How many? How how many percentage? Okay, so just describe. We are describing the data. We are just describing the data in um, non-construction data. Just giving you an example. If we have, for example, UTM student data, the whole UTM. So, example of descriptive analytics is how many percent are female, how many percent are male, right? So, how many percent? Uh, or how many total students are there in faculty of um, civil engineering, faculty of management, and so on and so on. So it's just what what is the data? Okay, what what happened? Okay, what happened? So that's the descriptive analytics. The next level up is diagnostic analytics. Okay, addresses the next logical question: Why this? Why did this happen? Okay, why did this happen? So taking the analysis step further, this includes comparing coexisting trends or movement, okay, uncovering correlations between variables and determining causal relationships where possible. Uh, can you think of something? Anyone? Um, diagnostic analytics, something that happened. Um, as I mentioned just now, I'm not from the construction industry. I'm more into the marketing business. Okay, so if uh, if I look into this example. Um, I mean this type of analytics in the marketing area. So for example, why does this month the number of sales of um, eggs went out? Why does um, the sales of eggs went up went up? Okay. Um, increase, increase. So probably we'll see oh so you 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 can uh, you can see that this happened actually is because the the what the, the price of chicken is too high so that's why people buy the eggs not the chicken example okay so the diagnostic analytics is asking this question why did this happen why did this happen okay it's more than just knowing the percentage but we we try to find out why does this happen um, I think somebody is saying something. Brain tumor detection. Yeah, it diagnose. Yeah, diagnose. Why does this happen? We look at the data and we can diagnose because of this uh, um, brain tumor happen. Or we see brain tumor happen. What are the causes? Okay, what are the uh, causes of this brain tumor? Right? So that's diagnostic ana analytics. Next is predictive analytics okay used to make predictions about future trends or events okay what might happen in the future so this is the main focus of um, most of the uh, big data research uh, in the construction industry that I have found okay even like uh, what Dr. Shamsul Hadi mentioned in his proposal yeah trend demand forecasting yeah correct that's predictive okay we, we try to predict something just like in normal daily life, we try to predict the weather, right? So from the 
data that we have uh, previous uh, one month, previous one week. So predict we predict that okay today it will be very rainy or today tomorrow it will be sunny for example yeah. Uh, but of course you should uh, focus on your industry yeah the construction industry okay. So by analyzing historical data in tandem with industry trends, you can make informed predictions about what the future could hold for your company. So depending on your construction industry, probably you will, you will, for example, you want to predict the use of IBS in the future, for example. Yeah. All right. Next, uh, prescriptive analytics. Okay, so this is the highest and the most complex. Um, after having knowing all the three uh, previous steps, three previous answers. So, what should we do next? Okay, we prescribe. We are like, you know, when we talk about prescribe, when we go to the uh, clinic, right, the, the doctor will give us, us the medicine, right, we, we prescribe. Uh, these are the trends that we found. These are the problems that we have found from the analytics, from the predictive analytics. So, what should we do? Okay, so what should we do next? Okay, so it takes into uh, account all possible factors okay in a scenario and suggest actionable takeaways right this type of antics can be especially useful when making data driven decisions okay as a conclusion uh, your the takeaways i hope you can get something um, my uh, suggestion is if you want to look into the big data um, area, so you should think of this. What is the purpose of your research? Okay, what is the purpose? What is the objective of your research? Do you want to actually look at how big data influence uh, decision making? Okay, and then you should ask this question. Um, what is the reason? Okay, data will be used for what reason? Okay, uh, for what reason? Is it for prediction? Is it for simulation? Or is it for decision support? Okay, and then the next one is know your boundary. You have to remember, okay, um, data science or big data and construction industry is a marriage of two areas. Okay, but you have to remember when you are in the engineering faculty, your contribution to knowledge is the engineering field. Okay, your contribution of knowledge is the engineering field. So you must be very clear of what area of engineering that you will be contributing to. Because I want to ensure that you avoid going towards with the science and data too much until you, you know, lose track, not going to engineering, but focusing more towards the data, right? Um, of course, uh, that should be discuss with your supervisor okay but again if for example um, you think there is a need to look into machine learning techniques and so on uh, to uh, further enhance your research uh, I would um, suggest you to get one one supervisor from the faculty of computing okay? um, and then know your context which phase of life cycle uh, so I mentioned just now the data science life cycle there are five phases so in the context of your study is it on safety is it on risk management whatever scope it is and whatever industry you are looking into so you need to know which phase of the data science are you looking into so that you won't lose track okay you don't um, jumble up everything okay so that you know which focus which phase are you focusing on all right, so uh, I think yeah, that's the end of my um, slides.